Good day everyone. Today I'll be discussing a new topic in physical science. This time I will be discussing about chemical bondings. To be specific, I'll just discuss the ionic bonding of elements between metals and nonmetals. I am your teacher, Mr. Mark Anthony B. Laroya. Before we begin, let us first discuss the basic characteristics of elements. We begin with metals. Metals are electron donors. That means they donate electrons or they lose electrons. After losing electrons, they become positively charged and they are now called as cations. The electrons that they donate are the electrons at the outermost energy level or also known as the valence electrons. For example, we have here magnesium which has an atomic number of 12. That means it has 12 protons in its nucleus and at the same time, it has 12 electrons. Based on the atomic structure of magnesium, magnesium has two valence electrons, the one at the outermost energy level. So you have one and two valence electrons. These are the electrons that magnesium will give up. So let's say you have the atomic structure of magnesium and then the magnesium will donate or lose the two electrons at the outermost energy level. When its outermost energy level loses electrons, they become empty and they also gone or they will also be this they will also disappear. And what will be what will we have now is a magnesium with two energy levels with eight electrons at the outermost energy level. So after magnesium losing two electrons, it will become now positively charged to be specific plus two because it donates two electrons. Now, an ion is a charged element after gaining or losing electrons. So in the case of magnesium, it is an element now with a charge after losing electrons and we call this now as cation for nonmetals they are the electron receivers after gaining electrons they become negatively charged and they, we call them now as anions the electrons that they gain becomes part of their valence electrons at the outermost energy level so for example we have the atomic structure of oxygen wherein the atomic number is 8, that means it has 8 electrons. At the outermost energy level, as you can see, it has 6 valence electrons. For the case of oxygen, it has 6 valence electrons, and then it can get or it can receive up to maximum number of 2 electrons. So after gaining 2 electrons, Oxygen now will be negatively charged. To be specific, the charge will be negative 2. And we call this now as an ion, an element or a charged element with negative charge. Aside from that, since oxygen is a nonmetal, when a nonmetal gains electrons and become ion, they change their name. So for example, for oxygen, it becomes oxide. Ionic bonding. When we say ionic bonding, it is a chemical bonding that involves complete transfer of electrons between a metal and a non-metal. The bonding takes place as the metal loses electrons and the non-metal gains the electrons. The metal becomes positively charged while the non-metal becomes negatively charged. Because the two elements are charged, the positive and negative charges, they bond together due to electrostatic force. So let's say we're going to have magnesium and oxygen. Now, since these two elements doesn't uh, do not change yet their charges or do not have charged just yet, they still at the neutral state. For magnesium, still has 12 electrons, and for oxygen, still has. Uh, eight electrons what will happen now is magnesium 
as the metal will donate the two electrons. And then the outermost energy level of magnesium will disappear. The two electrons that magnesium lost will be received by the oxygen. Therefore, oxygen will gain two electrons. The two elements now will have charges, magnesium with plus two and oxygen with negative two. So these two elements now become ions, magnesium as a cation and oxide as an anion. When we say ionic bonding, these two will bond due to their difference in charges. Due to octet rule, these two elements become stable. Magnesium now has eight electrons at the outermost energy level, and as well as the oxide will have the eight electrons at the outermost energy level. These two become stable elements. And now, let's say we have magnesium and oxide, which has both charges, plus two for magnesium and negative two for oxide, these two now are charged elements or ions. Since they have opposite or different, they have different charges, they tend to bond. The attraction between these two elements is due to electrostatic force. The force that causes the attraction between the two elements with opposite charges. And therefore, magnesium and oxide will bond. And that is now what we call ionic bonding. I'll give you now the list of common cations. These are elements with fixed positive charges. And here is the list. For potassium, it has plus one charge. That means potassium can give up up to one electron. For barium, it has positive two as the charge. That means it can give up two electrons. And for aluminum, with a charge of plus 3, that means aluminum can give up up to 3 electrons. Common anions. These are elements with fixed negative charges. Let's say we have chloride, which is originally from chlorine. After gaining electron, it becomes chloride. Cl negative 1 means chlorine or chloride gain one electron. For oxide, like in our previous example, gain two electrons and become negative two. And for phosphate, after gaining three electrons, it will, go, it will become negative three and the name will become phosphide. So let us now discuss the chemical formulas for some compounds formed by ionic bonding. So when we say compounds, these are Pure substances composed of two or more elements. But this, time, but this time, since we are talking about ionic bonding involving only metal and non-metal, that means we expect to have a compound with two different elements. For example, we have sodium and chloride. If we crisscross their charges, they will receive one subscript for each element. So, the chemical formula now for our product will be NaCl, or we call this as the sodium chloride, also known as, commonly known as, table salt. Another example would be magnesium plus 2 and chloride negative 1. So if we crisscross their charges, the value of 2 for, from magnesium will become the subscript of chloride. And the negative 1, or should I say just 1, will become the subscript of magnesium. But since it's just one, we don't need to write one anymore because automatic it means one. So we will just be having MgCl2 or magnesium chloride. The next one is magnesium plus two and oxide negative two. So they'll just crisscross their charges. Since both have the same numerical value of two, they're their subscripts will just be cancelled. In simplifying that, it will just become MgO or magnesium oxide. For potassium plus 1 and oxide negative 2, 
if we crisscross their charges, their chemical formula will become K2O or potassium oxide. It's because the numerical charge of oxygen or oxide will become the subscript of potassium. And the one from potassium will just be the subscript of oxygen. But we do not write one anymore. So it's just simply as K2O or potassium oxide. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Hope you learned something new about physical science. See you next time.